International Council, which is important for us, as responsible, as conservative, according to the best international standards. Haddock, just to show what we are dealing with, really, uh, I mentioned the Haddock explosion. And you see the 2003 year class, which is larger than any year class uh, since the ages back. And Haddock has lesser even year class strength than COT. And uh, this 2003 year class has actually th th this, this uh, hump here is due to the 2000 year class, 2003 year class. And uh, now it is decreasing in, in uh, numbers, so we will have to reduce the catches. So that is what we are doing these days. This is another, I mentioned the Kaplin. Two years, one or two year classes are responsible for the fishery. It is all about year classes, you know. Count how many animals there are in each year class. And how heavy they are, there you have the productivity. So here you have a very special guy. The redfish, they are deep water species, they are slow growing, and there are very few year classes of, 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 of big size. Uh, and, they, and when you are fishing such a, a stock, you have to understand that it will live for 20, 30, 50 years. Uh, and there are occasionally coming in strong year classes, and you have to make use of that year class in, in the wisest way by low fishing intensity. That's the best way of, of doing it. And here you see the 1985 year class. This is the year, this is number of fish in millions in the year 1995, 6, 7, down to 2007. And then you have, on this panel, you have the age in years. And here you have the year class 1985, which is obviously much stronger than the following year class and the year class before. And, we, and this is the fishing intensity of the, of, 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 of the 85 year class. You see, the 85 year class is really the backbone of the fishery all these years. And then we have another one, quite strong 1990 year class. Likewise, it is dominating the, the, the catches. So, you have to think about what kind of fish you're talking about, the, the lifespan of the fishing fish stock, and how frequent you get strong year classes into it. Just to conclude on, on all this, so harvest control rules are extremely important. Long-term management objectives uh, with, uh, with uh, with harvest control rules that are meeting these objectives, long-term objectives. We have been fishing the summer spawning herring after the collapse in 1960s. We have built up the summer spawning herring uh, by what we call optimal cuts, which is a very wise uh, harvest strategy. And that worked perfect until two years ago when we got an epidemic into the stock. So that's another issue. I'm not going to dwell with that. Cabling, we have been using a, a harvest strategy for cabling, leaving 400,000 tons of, of spawning uh, cabling every year in the sea. That has secured sustainability of the cabling. It may be uh, too heavy a harvest of cabling with respect to other resources. That's a scientific question we are dealing with. Since the uh, 1990s, we have had a um, harvest control rule for Atlantis Scandian herring, which is the international fishery, which also collapsed in the 1960s due to overharvest. We have had harvest control rule for cod since 1990s. It was not fully successful. Therefore, we made a change of it in, in the 2007, as I told you before. Blue whiting uh, rule has been in effect since 2000. 10, that's an international fishery, not only Iceland, but other countries. And we are in the process of doing harvest rules for all the species that are listed here, because this is a fundamental thing. So the situation, to conclude, we, we can say that uh, in many ways we, can, we, could, we could argue for that uh, the fish stocks in Iceland are generally relatively okay managed. I mean, I'm not saying perfect, as I said, at this outset. 
but if you look at the fishing mortality, for instance, fishing mortality is the measure of the survivorship of its year class, how heavy you are exploiting them. If you look at the fishing mortality of, of these species, they have more or less been at the right level, cod, haddock, seth, redfish, that the local redfish, ling, tusk, monkfish, wolfish, nephros, which is the Humor. Uh, it's a Norway lobster. It's, it's not, uh, not the true lobster, but it's a, we call it Nor. Yeah, okay. And, um, and the herring, both locally and internationally, they have been quite well managed. We have had difficulties with uh, some of the flatfishes. And uh, we, we are working hard on these. And, uh, I think we are covering, uh, coping with that. Halibut uh, is quite a difficult thing. It's a bycatch in most species, uh, in most fisheries, uh, the trawl fisheries here. So that is um, a difficult issue. And when it comes to cabling, we have had troubles with it due to environmental changes. Likewise with the shrimp, scallop, all of these species have been in trouble, but you would not blame the management for that. There are environmental reasons for it mainly. Uh, so, the outlook maybe, uh, these uh, guys, Ling and Tusk, they <laughs> seem to be, there are some signs that we need to reduce the fishing effort there, so we have to respond to that. The local herring stock is definitely in a trouble, and we have cut down the fishes, simply there's an epidemic uh, uh, problem there. And the capelin, uh, we uh, believe it may be recovering right now. We are having signs that uh, it has been a natural uh, low in recent uh, years due to the warming up, but there are indications this spring that uh, something is happening there. Just to conclude, uh, on the certification I mentioned, um, you have heard of Marine Stewardship Council and other certification bodies uh, international, uh, on international grounds. Um, Icelanders don't like to have a business company in, uh, outside Iceland uh, to certify their products. There is kind of a monopoly on it, that's true. Uh, so we have been developing a certification system with a third party uh, certification body, actually an Irish uh, certification company, is working on it because uh, we believe it's too expensive to uh, make use of modern students in color. They are charging a lot. We, sh we, we think it should be free of charge to behave well. So, and, and we believe that most of our fisheries can be exposed to the most critical measures in this context. So this is being developed, and I think the first stock will be completed uh, this year. So, to conclude, um, although, as I indicated earlier, we are criticized heavily in this country, and we are having a lot of debate on all of these issues regarding fisheries management. It is a widely accepted concept in this country that, that science-based management is the way to go. We may, we may debate interpretation of, of scientific data, et cetera, and methods, et cetera, et cetera. And that's actually quite natural. But, uh, the general concept that we should try to base our decisions on science is widely accepted. This is definitely not the case everywhere in the world. So that is, I think, one important point. Um, and then, of course, uh, this uh, stakeholder involvement and the interest of the stakeholders to behave well is very important. That it is important to try to design a system that call upon, calls upon the responsibility of the individual stakeholders, uh, which is not easy, but that is uh, extremely important. And the right space access to the resource is one part of it. Transparency is another one. And uh, general stakeholder involvement in, 
in most processes. I mean, we don't want to let the stakeholders help us to do the management advice. That is our responsibility. Our responsibility, on the other hand, is to seek the knowledge, to find all the knowledge that is in the industry, among the fishermen, in order to make our exercise correct. But we have to take the responsibility of making the management advice, not the stakeholder, uh, stake, stakeholder himself. They would often like to do it, but we cannot let him. So, uh, yeah, thank you. <laughs>